postulate four of quantum mechanics says that if a system is described by a wave function psi, then the average value of some observable property A is given by the following expression. So the average value, sometimes called the expectation value, represented by a quantity in these sideways brackets here. So we've seen this thus far for particle in a box in terms of average position x, average momentum p, position squared x squared, or momentum squared p squared. Any observable property in classical mechanics can be represented by this quantity here. Total energy, kinetic energy, etc. is equal to the integral over the entire domain of the wave function. So in one dimension, we'd say the integral from minus infinity to infinity dx. In three dimensions, we'd integrate over all three of them, dx, dy, dz, etc. So however many dimensions we have, integrate over the entire dimension, integrate over all real space. The complex conjugate of the wave function, psi star, times the operator acting on the wave function psi. This is the expression that we've seen thus far in our videos, because thus far we've only been using wave functions that are normalized. Wave functions that when we integrate this integral on the bottom, the integral over all space of psi star psi, that those integrals are equal to one. If we don't have a normalized wave function, then what we need to do is include this integral here in our denominator. Whenever we're confident that we do have a normalized wave function, then our expression for the average value of a or the expectation value of a can just be our numerator here. But when it's not, the most general form that we use, integral over all space, psi star operator acting on psi, divided by integral over all space, psi star times psi. Okay, so as I mentioned, if it's normalized, then this integral here on the bottom is equal to one. You can still do it if it's normalized, it'll just give you a one, so you, you don't need to avoid it if you have a normalized wave function, it's just gonna be extra work. Okay, so if we have it normalized, then it's the expression that we've been using in previous videos, our standard expectation value integral down here. Okay, so if we have our operator for this property acting on a wave function, if it's an eigenfunction of that operator, it's gonna give a constant times that same function. Then this set of psi n that qualify for this type of equation are called eigenfunctions. And as we saw from the previous video, we can have our wave function be an eigenfunction of that operator. Then some simplification happens for our expectation value. So we'd have the integral of psi star a psi but we know that a psi equals little a, a constant times psi, and little a is a constant, so we can factor little a out. So we have the average value of a is equal to little a times the integral of psi star psi. And if it's not normalized, that's integral of psi star psi divided by the same integral. So in either case, this ends up being one. So if our wave function is an eigenfunction of this particular operator, then its average value is just the eigenvalue. And that makes sense because according to the previous postulate, the only values that we can measure are eigenvalues. And when we can only measure this specific eigenvalue, it makes sense that that's the average value that we're going to measure during measurement. It makes sense that if, if it's the only thing we can measure, then it's gonna be the average value. Okay, so let's take this one step further and think about our integrals that we did for particle in a box where we measured the uncertainty of the particle in a box, uncertainty of position or uncertainty in momentum. Okay, so we have our wave function equals an eigenfunction of this operator A. So the average value of A is gonna be little a i. And if you do this same type of thing, if you do that operator twice, you're going to get ai squared. So the average value of the operator squared is just the average value squared. And we also know that the uncertainty from those videos, the sigma a, the standard deviation of what we're going to measure for those values, is equal to the expectation value of the operator squared minus the square of the expectation value for that operator. 
notice that these two are not the same. One has the square on the inside where you do the operator twice. One has a square on the outside where you do the integral and then square the result. So that equals ai squared minus ai, the quantity squared. So these two are going to equal each other and they're subtracting. So this is going to equal zero. So if our wave function is an eigenfunction of a particular operator, then the uncertainty for the property of that operator that it measures is equal to zero. So there's no uncertainty in a certain property for our given pro for that pro okay there's no uncertainty in the value the average value of a property if our wave function is an eigenfunction of that property